The Colombian Pablo Escobar is one of the most famous drug lords in history. At the height of his power in the 1980s, Escobar supplied roughly 80% of the world's cocaine and smuggled 15 tons of cocaine into the US per day, where his revenue would sit at a staggering $420 million a week. Despite being under the CIA and the FBI's radar, he is seen in this image posing with his only son in front of the White House in 1981 in a direct challenge to American authorities. To add insult to injury, Escobar would return to Colombia and even run for president in the next year. This is the historiographer. And in this video, we will discover Pablo Escobar's golden era, where he got so powerful that he was able to challenge the Colombian and even the American governments. A challenge symbolized by his brazen photo in front of the world's most powerful decision-making center, the White House. Escobar's journey to becoming a notorious drug lord had humble beginnings. Born in 1949 to a former and a school teacher, he started his criminal career with minor offenses. He sold fake diplomas and falsified report cards, before moving on to more serious crimes like car theft and smuggling. It wasn't until the mid-1970s that he turned his attention to cocaine trafficking, a decision that would, in all sense of the word, change South American history. Indeed. By 1980, Pablo Escobar's Medellin cartel in Colombia was generating an astonishing amount of revenue at its peak, so much so that an estimated $2.1 billion was lost annually due to the simple deterioration of cash which couldn't be held or laundered fast enough. Further, Escobar spent an estimated $2,500 a month on rubber bands needed to hold the thousands of stacks of green dollars together. The early 80s was the golden era for Escobar's drug empire, which likely propelled Escobar to gather enough courage to travel to the States and challenge his worst enemies, the CIA and the FBI. Despite his growing notoriety in the drug trade, Escobar managed to get in the States. Escobar first visited Florida, before moving on to the nation's capital, Washington DC. This photograph, taken by Escobar's wife, provides an intriguing glimpse into his life during this period. The image was taken in 1981, when Escobar was attempting to improve his public image. He had secured a position on Medellin City Council, and aimed to run for the President of Colombia. How he got in the US is still debated. Some sources recount Escobar using a diplomatic passport, while others claim that Escobar used forged documents. What makes this image so powerful is that at this point, the US intelligence agencies were actively aware of Escobar's illicit activities. However, the war on drugs hadn't yet reached its full potential, which gave Escobar the chance to fly under the radar and enter the US. In 1982, Escobar's political ambitions continued to advance. He won a seat in Colombia's parliament. His popularity, particularly in Medellin, was bolstered by his reputation for generosity. He funded the construction of football fields and was known for handing out money to the poor as his goal was to appear as the quote-unquote Robin Hood of the people. But this was a fatal mistake which ended his golden era. Joining politics was arguably Escobar's worst mistake, bringing him into the spotlight. As Escobar's power grew, so did the Colombian government's determination to stop him. Specifically, his political ambitions were thwarted by Colombia's justice minister, Rodrigo de Lara, causing Escobar to kill the justice minister in 1984. When authorities attempted to arrest him, Escobar retaliated with increasing violence, where Escobar started an official war on the Colombian state. He was implicated in the Palace of Justice siege in 1985, a tragic event that resulted in the loss of life of half of Colombia's Supreme Court. Escobar's campaign of terror escalated further with the bombing of Aviancha Flight 203. These acts of violence marked a turning point, transforming Escobar from a controversial figure into one of the world's most wanted criminals where he would finally be chased down and killed by the CIA in 1993. In conclusion, Pablo Escobar's tale is a mix of ambition, power, and tragedy. 
From nothing, he rose to command an empire so vast that billions of dollars rotted away. The audacious photo in front of the White House captures it all. A man who dared to stand before his greatest enemy, smiling, while an underground kingdom thrived in his shadow. But empires built on blood and powder are destined to fall. When cornered, he lashed out with a fury that shook the country to its core. Escobar's actions had long-lasting impacts in the Americas, where the consequences of his time as a drug lord are still felt in South America. If you like this video, then consider subscribing to spread history. This has been The Historiographer, and for now, see you in the next video.